Hi there. In this example I have a list which consists of a date column and a units column. And I have a setup to the left side, we choose in the column header the different years, and in cell B3 I have a drop list, I want to be able to select a month from the drop list and automatically have the units added together corresponding to the two conditions, the condition in the year in the column header and the condition in the month coming from cell B3. We know that a date is stored as a number, so if I select any cell from the date column and then I want to reveal the number stored behind the scene, I'll be using the shortcut Control shift tilde and here is the number stored behind the scene. I'll hit Ctrl-Z to undo, and because a date is stored as a number, dates are right aligned in the cell. We have a function in Excel that can extract the year from the date. This one will enable me to compare the year of this specific date to the year in the column header in row number 2. But what about the month? If you look at the drop list, the month here is a text. We do have a function that extracts the month, and if I use this function to extract the month, it will be returning the month as a number. So August will be number 8. How can I compare a number to a text? I'm going to use a sum product function that will be able to deal with this situation, but let's understand the concept first. I'll go to the worksheet named Concept, and I have the same exact list, and I created a conditional formatting in column H to highlight the numbers meeting the two conditions. I'm going to create my function in one single cell in cell C3, based upon two conditions for the time being, for the month I'm selecting from the drop list. I'm selecting August, and I have in the column header 2017. Now let's deal with each one of the conditions separately, and then I'll be combining all of them in the sum product function. So, what if I create a function that extracts the year from this date and compares it to the year in the column header? This function is a simple function, equal year. And then I hit tab. I'm looking at the year of this date coming from cell G3. And then I close the bracket, and I'm asking, is it equal? to the year in the column header coming from cell C2, and because I'll be copying down, I need to lock C2, and then I hit enter. Now it says true, because the year is 2017, and the column header says 2017, then my first condition is met. What about the second condition, the month? I want to compare to the month in cell B3, so I'll be using a month function, equal month, and then I hit tab, month of the same exact cell, cell G3, I close the bracket and I ask the question, is it equal to cell B3? Now when I hit enter, look what happens. It says false, but I'm quite sure this is August, so it should be equal. This is because the month function is returning a number. So if I hit F2 and select the first part, the month function, and then I hit F9 to calculate this portion of my function, it's returning 8. And because I'm comparing a number to a text, it's returning false. That's why my function is not working. So I'm going to replace the month function. Let me delete this function and replace it with a text function. Equal text. And then I hit tab. Text of this cell. And then I hit comma. And then I want to return the month portion of this date as a text. And because I want it as a month, so I type in double quotation. M, 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 four M's. That will return the full name of the month as text. If I close the bracket at this point and then I hit enter, it's extracting August. So it's possible for me now to compare it to cell B3. Let me put it in the edit mode one more time. So if I hit F2 and then I type, is it equal to cell B3? And I lock it by hitting F4 because I'll be copying down. Now if I hit enter, it says true. And because I have it true and it true, then the sum product function will be grabbing that number. Let me copy this function down and let's see what happens. I copied my function all the way down, and whenever the two conditions are met, I get it true and it true, and I have a conditional formatting in column H that highlights the number where the two conditions are met. But if I get a false and a false, then this number shouldn't be included in the addition 
the sum product should be skipping that number. If I have a true and a false, one of the conditions is met, the other condition is not met. The same situation, I don't want that number. I want just the numbers where the two conditions are met. In computer language, a true equals 1 and a false equals 0. I want to show you the ones and zeros, so I'm going to multiply each one of these functions by 1 to convert the true into 1 and the false into 0. I'll be typing an equal sign. I click on cell J3. I multiply it by 1, and then I hit Enter. It's returning 1. Let me copy it to the right, and then let me copy it down. Whenever I get a 1 and a 1, the 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 41 will be equal to 41. 0 multiplied by 0 multiplied by 28 equals 0, so this number is gone. 0 multiplied by 1 equals 0, multiplied by 11 equals 0. And the same applies to all the records in my list. The sum product will multiply these three numbers and will multiply these three numbers. Whenever I get a true and a true, the number will remain, and the sum portion of the sum product function will add up all the cells in orange. Now let me apply a filter just to keep the orange cell and to show you what happens and compare it to the result of the function that I created in cell C3. So if I select cell H3 and then right click and hover over filter and say, filter by selected cell color, I created a subtotal function and the subtotal function has the advantage of excluding the filter draws and look at the number, look at the total returned by the subtotal function. It matches the number returned in cell C3. Let me clear my filter by clicking on the down pointing arrow to the right side of the column header and then I'm going to clear the filter and let's start creating our function from scratch. I go to the sum product worksheet and I'll be selecting cell C3. I'm going to create the function in cell C3, and then I'm going to copy it to the right. I'll be just combining the year and the text function and the range that I want to multiply, which is the range having the units. To make my life easier, I'm going to name the entire range of date. I'm going to name it date following the column header, and I'm going to name the entire range of units. I'm going to name it units. There are so many ways of naming ranges, but I'm going to use an easy technique. So I select any single cell in the list. I hit Control A to select the entire list. And then I want to tell Excel, well, go ahead and use the top row for naming each column. So I use the magical shortcut Control Shift F3. And the Control Shift F3, the create name from selection, pops up. I want to take the check away from left column because I don't want to use the left column. I just want to use the top row. And then when I hit OK, Excel would have named the two columns. Let me confirm. So if I go up at the top to the left side of the formula bar and click on the down arrow for the name box, if I select date, Excel recognizes the entire column of dates. If I click on the down arrow and select units, Excel recognizes the entire column of units. What we need to do right now is to multiply two conditions by the unit column. Condition 1 for comparing the year, condition 2 for comparing the month, and the third range will be the units. Let's go and create our sum product function, equal sum product, and then I hit tab. Let's start with the first condition, which is the year. So I'm going to type it in brackets. So I type an open bracket, and then I type year, and then I hit tab. Year of what? Year of this entire column, the date column. So I don't remember the name. So I'll be using the helping tool of Excel. I hit the F3 key and all the names pop up in the paste name dialog box. I'll be selecting date and then I hit OK. Year of the date and then I type an equal sign. Is it equal to the year in the cell above? And because I'll be copying to the right, I want to lock the row but not the column. So I'm going to hit the F4 key twice, F4, F4. And then I close the bracket for this part. I want to check what this part will be returning, so I'm going to select the year function with the equal sign C2, and I hit the F9 key on my keyboard, and it's returning a bunch of trues and false. When the year matches the year, then I get a true. 
If the year in the date column does not match the label in cell C2, I get a false. Don't forget, we don't want to hard code the trues and false. I'm going to hit Ctrl Z to undo, and I'll continue building my sum product function. The year is my first condition. Let's multiply it by the second condition. I open bracket, and my second condition, because I want to compare the text of the date to whatever comes from the drop list, in cell B3, I'm going to use a text function. So I type text, and then I hit tab. Text of what? I don't remember the name, so I hit the F3 key, and I get the name, which is date, which corresponds to the entire column G. And then I hit comma. How would you like to format that date? The second portion of the text function, format text. So if I hover over the screen tip, it shows me the second argument, format text. I want to format it as month only. Month starts with letter M, so I'm going to type in double quotes, M, 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 M. If you type two M's, it returns the month in digit. If you type three M's, it returns the abbreviated name of the month. When you type four M's, it returns the full name of the month, and this is exactly what I want. So I close the double quotes, and then I close the bracket for the text function and ask the question, is it equal to the text coming from the drop list in cell B3? And because we are copying to the right, then I want to lock cell B3. I'm going to hit F4 and then close the bracket for my second condition. Finally, I want to multiply the two conditions by the units, which is the number that we want to add. So I'm going to hit the F3 key to bring the paste name dialog box, and I'll be selecting the entire range units, and I hit OK and close the bracket. Let's understand what's happening now. The first condition returns trues and false. The second condition returns trues and false, based upon the fact the conditions are met or not. And then the last argument is the units. If I get it true, which is a 1, multiplied by 1 if the second condition is met, and then multiplied by the unit. In this case, the units will remain, and the sum product function will add the units meeting the two conditions. Let me test. So I'm going to select this entire portion, and then hit the F9 key on my keyboard, and look at that. Whenever the two conditions are met, I see a number, otherwise I see a zero, and the sum product function will be adding all these numbers together. Let me undo Control Z because I don't want to hard code numbers in my formula, and when I hit enter, I get the result. Now I can copy my function to the right, and I'm getting the result for the three years. This is the sum of units based upon two conditions, a condition in the top row in the column header and a condition which is in the form of text coming from the drop list. If I change to August, I'm getting the numbers. It looks like we do not have units for 2019 in August. So if I change it to September, this is what we get. If I change it, let's say, to January, Everything is working fine. Everything is dynamic. I added a sheet named steps where you can see all the steps in writing. This will help you recreate the entire project. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel by hitting the big subscribe button to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.